Um, and what a better approach is going to be is to use logistic regression. So logistic regression is more complicated in a bunch of ways. Um, one is it uses the logit function as a link. Uh, and I guess I don't even know why I put this in my slides, because I'm not going to talk very much about what link functions are. Um, the logit, the thing that's going to be good about it is it is going to produce an S curve that is bounded inside zero and one. So it will either look like this where it'll be down at zero and then go up to one or it'll be at one and it'll go down to zero. Um, and so then I, I won't be able to get any predictions that are greater than one or less than zero. Uh, the other thing that's weird about it is it's fit using maximum likelihood estimation. So it's no longer trying to minimize the sum of the squared residuals. And in fact, we don't really have residuals for logistic regression. I'll talk more about that next week. Um, I didn't want to focus on that this week. Um, but it, this basically means we don't have sums of squares. We don't have an R squared value for a logistic regression model. Um, and, and like I said, we can't minimize the sum of the squared residuals to find uh, the best fit line. Um, I'm also not going to talk about maximum likelihood estimation in this class. I think there's a chapter about it, um, maybe in chapter 11, which is like extra topics for logistic regression, which I'm not planning to cover in this class, but you could go read if you were curious about that. There's going to be these three spaces in logistic regression. There's going to be the log odds space, which is the logit. Logit just means log odds. Um, and then there's going to be the odds space and the probability space. So instead of saying like, we made 0.8 of a field goal, we're going to model it in such a way that we can say the probability of making a field goal is 0.85, the probability is one, or the probability, you know, or the odds, or the log odds of making the goal. So um, we have to think in all three of these spaces because they're useful in different ways. Um, but this is one of the things that makes logistic regression a little bit complicated. And so um, as kind of uh, easing us into this, I want us to um, do some recall about probability and odds. So hopefully you have talked about probability and odds somewhere before, maybe a high school math class, maybe in your intro stat class, somewhere you've probably talked about it. Um, so the probability is the total number of successes out of the total number of possibilities. And it's denoted as pi. So this is one of those cases where statisticians shouldn't be allowed to name things. We were like, well, we really need a Greek letter for, for probability. Uh, pi, that doesn't mean anything else, does it? Um, so we're not saying, you know, this is not 3.14159. This is not that numeric constant. That's not what we're talking about in this class. Um, pi in this case means the probability. So it might be, you know, 0.9 or 0.99 or 0.5, right? It could be any number. Um, and we're going to call that pi. And then the other thing, which is also kind of about like chances of success, but it's just written differently, is the odds. So the odds is the number of successes over the number of failures. And we denote that pi over one minus pi because uh, the successes are pi, so one minus pi, that's the number of failures. And so it's just two ways to write the same kind of thing. So if the probability is one over two or 0.5, then the odds are gonna be one to one, one success, one failure. And you could either write it kind of as a fraction or at, you know one colon one, you could also just write it as one if you wanted to. Um, one third, which you know we could write it as a decimal if we wanted to, that's going to turn into odds of one, uh, you know, one half or one to two with the colon in the middle. So, is someone willing to tell me what the odds are that are associated with a probability of one quarter? 0.25. Um, oh, so that's that's the probability. Um, what's what are the odds though? One, yeah, one third. So one to three, like like that. Yep. Uh, what about um, one fifth? What odds are associated with that? Yep, one to four. So we still have the, you know, the number of successes is going to be the same. The sort of thing from the top is going to maintain because it's successes, both of them. Cool. Um, 
someone from room three, could you help me out with two thirds? What the odds are for that? Two to one, yeah, yep. like this, or you could write two. Yeah. Yep, so um, so you have to, like the numbers have to add up to the thing on the bottom. Uh, so it'll be two to one. Uh, and then, yeah, just three. We could also write it as three over one or three to one, like, like that. So, uh, so things like that. 